Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And when I first picked up the new Apple Silicon, or I guess we can call them the M1 MacBooks, I was not planning on switching away from Intel just yet. Don't get me wrong, I was super excited for this chip transition, and I was expecting these new entry-level machines to outperform the ones they were replacing, all while probably offering better thermals and better battery life. And while all of those things turned out to be true, they turned out to be better than I expected. Still, I wasn't planning on switching away from the 16-inch MacBook Pro or the iMac behind me. For the iMac, I've been using a 2019 model with an 8-core Intel i9 CPU, Vega 48 dedicated graphics, and 40 gigabytes of RAM. Apple actually lets you replace the RAM yourself on the iMac, so I just put in 32 gigabytes while leaving the 8 gigabytes that was already there, which is how we got that weird 40 gigabyte number. And while I love my iMac, and it was my main workstation where I did the bulk of my editing, I also wanted a portable solution so I could edit anywhere but that all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Well, not quite the Fire Nation, more like a disease uh, that's spreading around, but you get the point. Uh, I did get the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I reviewed it on this very channel and I loved it. So much so that I ordered one of the top tier models, an eight core 2.3 gigahertz i9 processor, Radeon Pro 5600M graphics card with eight gigabytes of memory and 32 gigabytes of RAM, which came out to be a $3,300 configuration basically not cheap. And when I did review it and for the time I used it, it was one of the best laptops that I have personally ever used. It had a big 16 inch display, which was great for having extra screen real estate, especially for editing these videos. It was powerful with its eight core processor. And for once, I actually thought that Apple was packing in some decent graphics card options from AMD into their laptop. It was powerful enough for me to even boot camp into Windows and play some games on it. But yeah, for about a year, I've been using that powerful combination of that iMac and that 16 inch MacBook Pro to run this channel. And for a while, I thought that these machines were even a little overkill for what I do on my channel in terms of pretty simple 4K video editing. However, that kind of changed when I recently upgraded my camera a few months ago to my Sony AS7 III. Yeah, I know I'm not utilizing this camera to its max, but I'm hoping to keep learning as I go. But anyway, Sorry. But anyway, this camera uses 10-bit 4K footage that was just brutal on both my iMac and my MacBook Pro. It pushed those machines to the limit and actually made my timeline start to drop frames and just not run as smoothly as it did previously with 8-bit footage. So imagine my shock when I started testing out and using these new M1 Macs, more specifically the M1 MacBook Pro, and the $1,299, the base model, eight gigabyte configuration was outperforming that 16 inch MacBook Pro. And since then, I've even added even more power by upgrading to the 16 gigabyte configuration. Now, while I'm video editing in my Final Cut timeline, my footage was rendering faster, the timeline was not dropping frames, not like the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the iMac, which were starting to struggle. Now, I expected Apple Silicon to be good, and I even expected it to benchmark somewhat well. So I wasn't surprised to see the initial benchmarks of it beating out the 16 inch MacBook Pro in single core performance, but I was a little surprised to see it beating it in multi-core performance. But I also thought that the 16 inch combined with the eight core CPU and a dedicated GPU while having double the RAM would beat my M1 MacBook Pro in real world usage. And that just didn't pan out. In almost every instance, except for one which I'll mention later, Okay, it's gaming, but in most instances, the 13 inch MacBook Pro outperformed my more expensive 16 inch model. Like even in exporting video, which I thought the 16 inch MacBook Pro would win when I eventually did this benchmark test, just exporting a simple 10 minute 4K clip, the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro exported it in three minutes and 12 seconds. My 16 inch model took seven minutes and 15 seconds. It took more than double the time for it to export the same 4K video clip in ProRes. That's kind of mind blowing that this cheaper laptop could outperform the 16 inch model all while being smaller all while the fan wasn't even spinning up inside of that 13 inch model. And by the way, the 16 inch model sounded like a jet engine by the end of that export. 
This isn't even a conversation I feel like I should be having with you right now because these are entry level machines. Even this MacBook Pro model isn't the real higher end $1,799 MacBook Pro that has four Thunderbolt ports. This is the entry level model that if it were using Intel chips, just wouldn't be able to compete against this 16 inch MacBook Pro. Besides that, there were just other issues living in that pre-Intel world. Even though the 16 inch MacBook Pro had a better thermal design and for the most part, the fan noise was a lot better than the old 15 inch model it replaced, it could still get quite hot and you could hear those fans when running programs that heavily utilize the CPU and GPU. And even though the 16 inch Pro packed in a 100 watt hour battery, that's the biggest battery possible to still be able to bring that laptop with you on an airplane, the 16 inch would still need to be frequently plugged in. Not if you were doing something like light web browsing or listening to music or even watching video. The 16 inch was actually pretty good for tasks like that, but Say if I was editing a video in Final Cut Pro 10 like I'm doing on this 13 inch MacBook Pro, the 16 inch would just chew through battery. And like I said, when I reviewed that 16 inch laptop at the time, it did hold up well in those areas. However, it just can no longer compete against what Apple is offering now with this M1 processor. The thermal performance, of the new M1 processors is just insanity. Like the MacBook Pro never gets hot. That's not a lie. It doesn't even get hot while editing an entire video from start to finish in this machine. I could use it on my lap and it would be as cool as a cucumber through that edit. Try doing that with any of the Intel MacBook Pros and you'll know how hot and how uncomfortable those machines can get. Also, the fan noise is just non-existent. I've edited videos on this, photos, podcasts, connected it to a 5K external display, ran benchmarks on it, and all that time, I can't recall when I've actually audibly heard any fan, unless I was running a benchmark and I put my ear directly up against the machine, then I could hear it. To top it all off, the battery life is just amazing. Sure, you can use this thing all day for long web browsing, watching video, listening to music, word processing, all that stuff. But you can also use this machine for a long time doing intensive applications, things that you just couldn't do on that 16 inch MacBook Pro using Intel. I hate to bring up video editing again, but it's what I do and it's a demanding task that just sucks up battery life. But on these M1 MacBook Pros, I can edit an entire video, export it, upload it, all without having to worry about looking for my power brick to charge the thing up when I'm done, and I can continue using it. Even when the battery low warning comes on these MacBook Pros, it's almost a joke. It's almost like Apple has to redefine what soon means because you still have at least an hour, if not more, before the battery fully dies. It's changed my behavior on how I use my laptop. When I need to go somewhere and pack this laptop up, I don't worry about bringing an extra charger with me. That's something I would never attempt to do with a MacBook Pro with an Intel chip. I would always make sure I packed a power brick so I could charge it up and I don't have to do that anymore. It almost feels iPad-like. Yes, I know it's still running Mac OS, but the battery life, the thermals, the instant response you get out of this MacBook Pro make it feel more like an iPad. And I mean that in the best way possible. For me, before, getting the laptop out meant extra work, extra steps, extra compromises that I didn't want to deal with unless I had to do actual real work. And I think a lot of us have probably felt that way for around the past five years, maybe even more. Most of us would rather grab our phone or our iPad than grab our laptop. The laptop was becoming less fun because of all of those compromises that took out what has become our need for instant, responsive, always on systems. That's how this MacBook Pro is. Not only does it have the power to keep up with my workflow, it's the instant on nature, the amazing battery life, and a device that works with me Rather than against me, the M1 MacBook made laptops fun again. It makes it something I want to pick up and use rather than something I need to pick up and use. Are there things that the 16 inch MacBook Pro still does better than the M1 MacBook Pro? Of course, it still has a better port selection with its extra two Thunderbolt ports. It still has the best laptop speakers that I have 
ever heard in a laptop that the smaller 13 inch speakers just simply can't compare to, and the graphics performance on the 16 inch is still better with that dedicated graphics card than what I'm getting out of these new M1 MacBooks. And it also has the ability to boot into Windows so you can take advantage of an even larger catalog of Windows games. However, for me, I just can't go back to using that system. It feels like a legacy computer, and right now, I'm just looking forward to the future. So that's why I'm switching from my 16-inch MacBook Pro to the entry-level 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro. And when I think about what Apple can do with their future lineup of chips, it is crazy that these will be the slowest M1 or Apple Silicon Macs that they ever release. So it only stands to get even better from this point on. All right, everyone, hopefully you found my story interesting of why I'm switching from the 16 inch MacBook Pro to the new M1 13 inch MacBook Pro. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you subscribe. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, if you wanna switch like me and, and get an M1 MacBook Pro, uh, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description. And also let me know, did you like this video? What are your thoughts on the new M1 MacBook Pros? Did you like this style of video? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to interacting with you there. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.